Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on here. For the first time, I have the entire H. Moser & C. Streamliner Sports Watch Collection. The original flyback chronograph on the left, next, launched in 2020, the center seconds, and new for 2021, this is the Streamliner Perpetual Calendar. Like an exuberant puppy, it's not easy to get them to stay like this on command, but when they do, you're just so happy. So let's start with the first of the series and talk about this group of watches and how Moser has expanded its sports watch offerings from the original Pioneer into a new organic integrated bracelet sports watch paradigm. We're going to start with the flyback. The original flyback that came out in 2020 was a 100 piece limited edition with a gray fumé dial. Technically and dimensionally identical, the follow-up model was what you see here, the funky blue fumé fade. It is the Streamliner Flyback series production. This one has a non-standard case back. It is a press demonstrator. Pay it no heed. This watch is not limited by a certain production number, but it is limited in its production volume, as most Moser watches will not be of the Streamliner family. The timepiece, of course, is 42.3 millimeters in diameter by 14.5 millimeters thick, and the way I like to measure the Streamliners is I take one link on each side, so I measure a distance across the wrist of 48.1 millimeters. Now, the new perpetual calendar is thinner. It is 13.4 millimeters, and you can see here, as I compare their thickness, the Perpetual is a little bit slimmer. It's not a big deal, but it's there. That's the only dimensional difference between these two models. Now, taking a look at this watch, what I like about it is it references some of the best elements of 70s watch design without plagiarizing Gerald Genta. And let's be frank, a lot of the integrated sports watches right now are doing exactly that. Well, Moser starts with a tonneau case, which was common during the 70s, but they put their own spin on it with their characteristic recessed case band. Then they add a lovely lapping machine radial grain. This one is well-traveled, as you can see, but that pattern emanates from an imaginary center point over the center of the dial. This is another feature of many 70s chrome so you've got that 70s tunnel profile, the lapping machine grain, and then you add an integrated bracelet. But this one, rather than being geometrical with sharp angles and uh, degrees of separation from an angular lug profile, it has a flow and a sweep to it. And you can see it's really quite organic, almost like we're looking at the plate mail of some sort of chitinous aquatic creature. The interlink of the individual elements is incredible as there's no daylight visible. The tolerances are super tight, so there's absolutely no gap top or bottom. And you can see the nuance as there are polished profiles within the individual links that are most evident when you roll them through the light with satin finished primaries, a lovely taper from link to link. And then you can see there's a polished bevel that runs along the case flank and extends perfectly through the bracelet. We have on all of the streamliners, a twin trigger double deployant and the individual removable links of which there are many many are fixed in place by pins and sleeves so they are solid and they stay fixed tight. Another element that Moser borrowed from the 70s is this idea of the checkered flag racing dial. So we have staggered hashes that make it easier to read fractions of a second with the chronograph. Not only is it useful for motorsports when reading fractions of a second, but it does look like the checkered flag that marks the end of official time during a motor race. Now, of course, it's also a Moser, which means it's clean. It's also distinctively colored, having that funky blue coloration that Moser has made a signature of the brand with the fumé fade from light to dark that is also another one of their styling trademarks. You can see that we have hands polished black with global light material fit on top. We have a flyback functionality here, so you can reset the chronograph just by pressing the reset trigger. You don't need to stop it first. That allows rapid resetting if you need to time events that occur in quick succession, such as two cars crossing a finish line or starting a race. Now, you'll also see that we have radial seconds and we have radial minutes. So you have a 60-minute register that is radial rather than a sub-register. Most chronographs give you 30 minutes. This one gives you 60. It's more practical and with the big radial display, easier to read. All the streamliners with screw-down crowns all of them 120 meters water resistant. Here you see the HMC 902, which is based on the Agenor Agengraf 6361. Clever because this 54 hour power reserve automatic hides its rotor underneath the dial. Now it also has column wheel action, which means it's a pleasure to operate, very crisp. It is beautifully finished. It perfectly fills the case back and it includes the innovative Agen clutch, which is a combination of the best qualities of a lateral clutch, which is aesthetically beautiful and traditional 
and a vertical clutch which has no play in its operation. So it's the best of both. It's also a very rugged movement suited to a sports watch. After the flyback, Moser launched the Center Seconds. It is a simpler watch. It's also a more compact watch. 40 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters thick, and if you want to measure that link-to-link -link distance, it's 45.7 millimeters across. Pop it on the wrist. Again, my wrist is 16 centimeters circumference. Very easy to accommodate. Very comfortable. Uh, wraps around the edge. This will wear on a smaller wrist. If the flyback and the perpetual are good for a wrist down to 14 centimeters, I'd say down to 13 and a half, 13 centimeters circumference, your wrist is going to wear this one well. It's also the one to wear if you have a tight dress cuff or sleeve that might hang up. Another look, so you can see them back to back. This is the flyback. It's a bigger watch, no doubt. They feel the same, but there's no doubting the center second is a more compact watch, closer in size to a standard Royal Oak 41 or a Nautilus 5711. All the detailing of case and bracelet is similar. You can see that the Perpetual calendar and the flyback feature off-centered crowns, whereas you have a more conventional crown profile on the center seconds. Here we have matrix green, and the dial changes a bit. From a single set of Arabic numerals, here we have baton-style indices applied at the edge of the matrix green fumé dial, and they're all black polished, as the hands are. We also have that global light loom. I'll show you the loom once more. And you can see just the hands. There is one exception with the perpetual, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, it's a very simple movement. It has hacking or stop seconds. It's the HMC 200. You can synchronize it to a reference time. And it is a magic lever, bi-directional rotating, three-day power reserve, 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate. You can see it has a sports watch architecture, free sprung with a full balance bridge for toughness, and Moser's characteristic double-crested Cote de Genève, a handsomely decorated tough sports watch caliber that Moser makes itself, right down to the hairspring, the escapement, and the balance. Uh, this watch is your basic streamliner, and it's a timepiece that represents a much more compact and elegantly integrated alternative to the Pioneer. The Pioneer is big Big, aggressive, brutalist, and strident. The streamliner is a little bit more soft, nuanced, progressive in its flow from case down to bracelet, down to clasp, down to wrist. Uh, it, it's definitely a more organic look, whereas the Pioneer is more resolutely mechanical. It's the machine that's outgoing and outstanding, whereas this one, this one is more of a man-machine Two organic forms made one. That's the sensibility of the streamliner. Very different from the strap-clad and somewhat brutal pioneers. Now, with the perpetual calendar, we have some things that carry over, namely the bracelet and the case, for the most part, from the flyback. It is thinner. We have a fumé fade dial, more similar to the original streamliner flyback in that it is a gray gradient from ardoise at the center to black at the edge, but we add the applique baton-style hour indices from the center second. We also have the global light material, once again, but what sets the perpetual calendar apart is, you can see this better when I move the hands, but the typeface of the date, which you can see, I'm setting bi-directionally forward and back, forward and back. The date that is visible in the light is the date that will be loomed. Now, it is still a very Moser take on a complication because we have the Andreas Streller design perpetual calendar system that is super subtle and a, a barely visible engraved Moser marquee at 12 o'clock. Now, when I talk, speak of the perpetual calendar system by Streller, I really mean the system that allows a perpetual calendar to represent the months and the date on the dial side with the leap year phase hidden on the reverse side. Now it has a number of advantages over a standard perpetual. First, it's minimalist, so it doesn't clutter the dial. Second, it can be set forward or backwards. It's important to note that it can also be set any time of day without damaging the mechanism. Also worth mentioning, you have a small stub index, 12 hours, 12 months, they correspond. So what you can do is you can set this watch forward or backwards and that little stub index will give you the month while a large date gives you exactly that. Now, if you look carefully, you can see there's a split between the oversized date discs because two oversized date discs are used to present a large aperture date. Normally, to have a date that large, you'd need a huge dial and one enormous disc, but because they overlap and jump instantaneously, the system here is transparent. It allows for a smaller watch dial. You may note that the watch is 
also equipped with hacking or stop seconds. And taking over from the 10 o'clock index, we have a power reserve indicator. Nominally, the watch is a seven day reserve, though these watches are known to run for almost nine days in total. On the reverse side from the HMC 800 series of twin mainspring barrel movements, here you can see we have a lovely nickel anthracite coating on the bridges and the plates. Still 120 meters water resistant. You can see that on the case back. It's got the full balance bridge with the free sprung index. It is a tough movement. It beats away at a stately or pocket watch inspired 18,000 vibrations per hour. And here, instead of a flat hair spring, we have a handmade overcoil to allow the watch to keep even time in any position with respect to gravity. Moser makes the balance, the hairspring, and the escapement, which on this watch is their premium offering, 14 karat gold, both the lever and the escape wheel. The idea being to improve power reserve, reduce friction, and improve precision. It's handsomely decorated. You can see double crested Cote de Genève across the bridges with golden chiton holding the twin mainspring barrels as they would have been in the pocket watch era of Moser construction during the 19th and early 20th century. We have a lovely swan's neck style click spring and black polished click handsomely executed. All screw heads are black polished and then you can see some of the train actually set in golden chiton leading down to the escapement. The timepiece of course beautifully decorated in every regard. It rewards repeated viewing with a loop. I'll throw it on my wrist real quick so you can get a sense of the figure it cuts on the forearm and again a little bit thinner than the flyback, but bigger than the center seconds. This is the new perpetual calendar, brand new to the Streamliner family. It is a practical and friendly everyday complication with very cool high horology and independent horology credibility being a collaboration between AHCI star Streller and H. Moser and C. of Schaffhausen. They like to say that their watches are very rare and they make about 1,500 watches a year, so that's certainly true. But remember, the streamliners are a specialty within Moser's entire scope of production, just a few dozen of any given streamliner model being made per year. To ask about any streamliner, reach out to me, Tim Masso, at tmasso at thewatchbox.com. That's email. Team also at thewatchbox.com.